Okay, we are now ready to start wrapping some of our bundles. And my first and favorite way to wrap, wrap bundles is with tiles. And if you can tell, the tiles actually get the image of your plant life on them and they don't come off. I have scrubbed them to see if they will scrub clean and they don't. You can use either side and this side of the tile will create another texture. Okay, now we have all of our equipment and supplies and our plant life from the yard and we are ready to start wrapping our bundles. And um, I keep a dry cloth next to me to dry things off so that they're not as wet and gushy and runny, even though sometimes that's exactly what I like. But I always make sure I keep a, a cloth around me for my hands. And I'm going to take my paper out. And remember, I have a variety of papers here. And I'm going to keep them a little bit drier and fold it in half. But the first thing I'm going to do is lay down a plant, some kind of plant life on the bottom. Now every one of these pieces needs to be dipped into iron. You can keep one of these filled with the iron water and keep them soaking, but again you get more of a runny effect if that happens. So I have a piece of felt here and I've taken the piece of felt and I've put my iron water in the bottom of that piece of felt and now I'm just going to lay that down there. Do this and because I'm making a book out of this I want to make sure that I have plant life on the inside so on the inside I am going to put them in both directions and the reason I'm putting them in both directions is the front side of the leaf gives more of the impression or imprint the back side is where the leaf respirates and you're get, gonna get more little dots going there. So, I'm gonna get dots on this side, I'm gonna get impressions on the other side. Let's put one more in there. And everything just gets squished down in there. I'm gonna put this flower this way. And I squish it down so that it's as flat as possible. If you've got too much thickness of the plant because of the stem, you can take an, a rolling pin and roll it out also. So I'm going to put a couple of different types of papers in here and then you'll come back and see the finished product here in a minute. Okay, I usually put four sets of papers into each, between each set of tiles. I've got three right now. So I can do some thinner papers to fill up. So I'm gonna add some of my uh, vintage photos here. And these are ones I've already run up on the printer. And so when I lay it like that, that is going to get onto the back side. On the inside, it's gonna have very, very minimal. But I need to be very careful where I place that next leaf because I don't want it to cover her face. So I'm going to put it right there. This is my great grandmother. Then I want something a little bit smaller here. To be on the front side. And what I have discovered is that I can print, print these in the heat press with flowers and get magnificent colors. I'll show you that in a bit. So let's add a couple of those. So I'm going to add a couple of envelopes, but the most important part of the envelope, if you can't see, there is sticky there if you dye it with a sticky it sticks. So I can either cut that sticky off, but what I've discovered is that I like just the envelope part anyway, so I cut the whole thing off. 
and I'm going to put one of those, well, I think maybe I'll put one of these here first. This is the one that was uh, soaked in alum and dried. I'm going to put that one right there. And I'm going to put this large flower right on top of it and see if I can get both of those impressions there. And then I'm going to put the back side of my envelope down. And I think I'm going to put one up there, put that down there. And then I'm going to put one of my smoke bush leaves down. And let's see, but I want to address this envelope. So voila. And maybe one more piece of thin paper on there will do the job. Again, now that I'm back to this, and if you can tell how I have cut each of my rose leaves off of the stems, and they do a great job like that. And my um, marigolds, I pull those off. I like to kind of scatter them, and then I put some iron there, and one last leaf on the surface, and this bundle is done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my second tile, I'm going to lay it on top of this whole bundle, get it all to lay in there fairly, oh the, the envelope is sticking out a little bit, no biggie. I'm going to squish it down. And then I'm going to take my rubber bands and put one there. Put one here. And then I cross them that way. This way. And I've got it stable, but not real tight. So now I'm going to take my cotton twine and because if I just put this into my boiling uh, pot right now, it's uh, th those are going to break and that's not going to work. And I use cotton twine. Um, I've used silk before and I love the silk because I can um, take this, the leftover silk and it's dyed now and it just does a great job of, of um, being couched down on my artwork. However, um, it, it's a little fragile and it breaks pretty easily and I cannot get it as tight as I like to get it. Do not use ute. It um, steals the dye for some reason. It just is a stealer. So now I'm gonna just hold this as tight as I can and wrap it as tight as I can one way and then reverse directions and go the other way and this ball of twine should be the right cut the right length because I've used it before and this one didn't die very much but okay too. Then when I get to the end of it, I just simply put it underneath and pull it tight. Voila, it's ready for a boiling cycle or a steaming cycle. That's it. I'm going to wrap one more set because I want to show you something very fun that I've just started doing that it's just wonderful. Now, what I'm going to do with this one is I have these nifty grids and uh, came from Hobby Lobby. It was a large seat sheet and I cut it down to be my six by six size and I'm going to lay that on top and then I'm going to lay another leaf on top of it because it will act as um, both a resist with the holes and the metal in it actually releases 
more of the plant life. That's what the iron does all the time is release. But next, I'm going to take a piece of silk and I'm going to actually bundle my silk in here. I've always wrapped my silk around rebars or railroad ties or um, my dowels. Um, but recently I thought, I wonder what would happen if I put my, my silk inside of here. Will, it, will I be able to get this kind of an image to transfer onto my silk? And because I can't wrap that inside of my rebar because it's not flat or it's too flat. And here is the result of wrapping my silk inside of my tiles. It's just beautiful. And you can see those images of the metal grid with the holes in it. Really fun. So eucalyptus is one of my favorite things to use. And this is very dry. It's been in my freezer for probably hmm, six months, eight months. And that's just fine. It still does a fantastic job. And on that piece of silk, you saw that the red was on there. That is the eucalyptus. And so I'm gonna take the eucalyptus. It probably doesn't need a lot of iron because it's got the iron behind it. But I'm gonna put that, iron, that, that eucalyptus in there anyway, just to give a little extra added oomph to it. I'm gonna lay it in there. And then I'm gonna add some more plant life between each of my folds. is how it looks after you've used it numerous times. You can also put it around a railroad tie, a piece of rebar. You just need to make sure that it's not too long, that it won't fit into your pot, your boiling pot. And a friend, uh, she had her husband cut a bunch of rebar for me, which was delightful. You can use copper pipes and you can use the thicker copper pipes. You can use the thinner copper pipes. You can even put the copper pipe uh, inside of the bundle, start on one end, wrap it, and put this in the middle of it. We are going to be wrapping around a rebar, and we're going to be using a carrier cloth in order to do this, and a piece of plastic. The reason we're using a piece of plastic is it is the best way to get a very tight uh, contact between your fabric and your plant life. And since my fabric is 14 inches and then my carrier cloth is 7 inches, I'm going to cut this about 10 inches wide. And this is just painter's uh, 2 mil um, plastic that you get Home Depot, Walmart, nothing special about it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this, lay this out first on your tabletop. And even though it's a little bit more difficult to work with your fabric wet, you want your fabric to be wet, either spritz it wet, so your, your carrier cloth you can actually um, let dry, but spritz it wet because that's the way that you are going to get it to, uh, silk has a lot of give when it's wet. When it's dry, it doesn't. So as you wet it, boiling it in the water, it's going to loosen up and not give as good of a contact and therefore not as good of an imprint. Got my piece of plastic down. I got my gloves on. And the first thing I'm gonna lay down is my carrier cloth. And like I said, this is seven inches wide. You can see that I made my piece of plastic plenty wide enough and that's fine. And again, there's a couple of options with this. 
You are free to just lay your fabric on top of this and have a single layer of fabric, of images on your fabric. I like lots of images and having a front and a back piece of my fabric. So I go ahead and I just lay down a couple of pieces. This particular piece of fabric is wool gauze and it was not using a carrier cloth. It's just wool gauze. It was not mordant and it just has the eucalyptus leaves laying inside of it and it is wrapped around and then folded in half and wrapped around a piece of rebar. The metal in the rebar was enough iron to release that amount of red in this orange gauze, on this uh, wool gauze. I'm going to lay some plant life down first because I have it, so I might as well use it. Now, because I'm using a carrier cloth, I do not need to dip any of these into my iron water. Okay, now I'm gonna lay my piece of silk that I am attempting to dye on top of it with it extended halfway out because it's gonna be folded over on top of each other. Okay, after I have those laid down, now I'm going to fold it in half. And you can tell my bottom piece is a little bit larger. So I'm going to tuck her in there and lay another whole layer down. So whichever one feels more comfortable to you, that's the way you're going to roll. The way you're gonna do this first is you're gonna take your plastic. This is a little bit too long. I don't want it quite this long here at the beginning. So I'm gonna cut it off just a little bit. And I'm gonna fold this over to start my rolling pattern. And I don't like folds in it. And I wanna make sure that my fabric is going between my dowel. And then I'm gonna start rolling. I usually stand up to do this because I wanna hold it nice and tight and continue to pull it. I'm pulling it all the time. There's a piece of eucalyptus in there. The stem is kind of pointing the wrong way, but that's okay. Um, if you have strength problems and you have a difficult time uh, being able to hold this tight, you can get a, a case of, of diced tomatoes, is what I have, and lay it on the uh, here and keep moving it down to keep that weight, to keep this really, really solid and secure. And that helps sometimes to keep it Until I roll a bit and I pull, roll a bit, pull, as things move, just put them back into place, pull, and that's just as tight as I can. And then I just take it a little bit further than this, cut it off. Again, I look for the end, tuck it under, and just pull it. And now it's secure enough to be boiled. So that is how you wrap a bundle. You have the tile bundle, you have this bundle, 
Okay, the last one I'm gonna show you here, and I'm not gonna show you on a large piece of paper, but I am gonna do it on two pieces of paper here, is how to roll around a dowel your paper. And the reason you would wanna do that is because you can, um, you can boil a larger piece of paper than you can in your tiles. Now I'm using a six by six tile. They come in eight by eight, and you can also get one of the huge roasters from the restaurant stores and do an even larger piece of paper. I'm going to use a thinner piece of dowel to do that with um, and I want to make sure that I don't put it in the middle in case it doesn't um, fit into my pot but I put it towards one of the ends and it's a little bit tricky to wrap but it can be wrapped just like your fabric Get it as tight as you can. That one little leaf does not want to, that smoke bush does not want to stay. One of the advantages of this is you can do a larger piece of paper, but the other advantage of this is you get the shibori effect on the outside.